Candy and Wesleyan Zolikoffer are parents of four children, eight-year-old Caden, seven-year-old Naomi, four-year-old Justice, and 22-month-old Zion. In 2000, 2021, they were faced with the devastating news that their youngest son, Zion, had a potentially life-threatening condition. And at just 15 months, the couple made incredible sacrifices for their family. And they've been sharing their journey to so many on, the, on social media with the goal of helping other parents. Take a look. In 2020, when I was carrying our fourth child, Zion, I thought that we were prepared for what lay ahead for us, but it turned out we really weren't. In my final trimester, I learned that I had preeclampsia. I was on bed rest and could barely move, couldn't even really spend time with my children. I even ended up leaving my job as a partnership coordinator because I was too sick to work. Seeing Candy in this position really hurt my heart. I was helpless in this situation. Once Zion was born, my condition got worse. I was unable to hold him without potentially dropping him. I also was diagnosed with postpartum anxiety, and I just felt really hopeless. When Zion was 15 months old, the doctors told us that he had inherited a rare disease, Pucci-Yeager syndrome, which impacts the colon and the GI system with precancerous polyps. When I heard this, my thoughts were all over the place. This disease infected three generations of my family. My mom, who passed away, myself, my oldest son, and now Zion. I blame myself. We were under a lot of pressure, both financially and emotionally. It was very stressful and brought a lot of tension to our marriage. It was like we were holding our breath until we heard some good news. Joining us from their home in Omaha, Nebraska, please welcome Candy and Wesleyan Zolikoffer. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, Candy, I'll start with you. How are you all holding up? How, how is it for you right now? You know, it's um, sometimes it can be really hard just seeing our little guy going through the different procedures that he, st that he still has to have in order to um, really process and deal with, the, with his um, disease that he has. Wesleyan, obviously our thoughts are with you and Candy and the children. To hear you express that you feel guilt, that the pressure of this being hereditary is heartbreaking, um, but it's real, it's how you felt. Tell me more about that, that pressure of knowing that this, was her this is hereditary and it's been generational impact on your lives. Yeah, so my mom had it and she died at 45. Oh. It's precancerous and hers turned into cancer and she died at 45 and um, I had it and mine was more progressive than my mother and I didn't think I was gonna live past 30 mm -hmm. and I didn't think I was gonna have kids so to turn around to have kids and then my oldest son have it and then my youngest son to have it, um, it was really just mind blowing just to see and to realize that, man, this is really passed down through my bloodline. It's really rare, one out of every 500,000 people have it, but to have it back to back to back mm -hmm. in my family is just very interesting. It is, and, and you know, we, we look at pressure, right? If our own health is compromised, that's one type of pressure. But Candy, when it's your children and it's your baby, how do you explain that pressure and, and what it does to you as a mom? Hmm. Ooh. <laughs> when you ask that question, it just takes me back to when he was diagnosed. I mean, we just thought he was sick, you know, just a typical rhinovirus that was going around. Um, and so to get to his doctor and for her to call the emergency room and say, hey, he needs a bed immediately, that was, um, I just felt like I was holding my breath. <laughs> I was holding my breath until we got to the next moment. What did you do or how did you compartmentalize that, that pressure, that weight, that feeling of drowning to wait a minute? I'm his mother and I've got to be strong and I have to deal with this pressure. How did you do that? You know, it, um, knowing that I had our other children, knowing that we had to 
care for Zion, but then also be present for our other kids, knowing that they're going to miss their little brother. They're, we don't know what's happening. Um, I just had to just, just step up mm -hmm. and just do it. It was also helpful to have, we have a, an amazing community that surrounds us right. and they stepped in to help in any way that we needed, whether it was to watch the kids, bring me a cup of coffee or, or just sit with me in the parking lot um, because COVID restrictions kept people from really visiting and being at the hospital. Wesley, this show is about how to deal with the pressure. I mean, part of it is talking about what the source of it is. So we, we see the source of it. What I find incredible is like our first family, their solution was to get a group home and, and share the expenses. So much of your journey has been sharing it with people on social media. How did that help Wesley to say, okay, we're not gonna just sit in this room and deal with this alone. We're gonna share it with other people on social media. How did that release some of that pressure, some of that stress for you all? Yeah, so we um, were part of a community, PG Eggers um, support group on Facebook. And so we get contacted um, by people all around the world um, who has the same disease. And sometimes they're the only person in their country that um, have it. And so they don't know, you know who to talk to. Their doctors don't really know, you know what to do. So they come and talk to us about it. Um, so it's been really um, heartwarming and um, just inspirational just to hear all these different stories from all around the world based off of telling our story. Right, because that's amazing when you think about it. You're under pressure and then you think, I'm going to share it. And in the process, I'm going to help other people. And that made you feel some relief candy, some some purpose, if you will, out of this pain. Yeah, it did. I mean, to to see Zion's story, when he <laughs> when he got out of the hospital, just seeing his face, he was so excited. He was there for six and a half weeks. And uh, when he came home, just the <laughs> huge smile on his face was really inspiring. Um, well, Candy, hang on for me, a second, because you just said the cute smile on his face. My live audience just went, aw. I can't hold this secret any longer. Guess who's coming up after the break? Up next, we're going to meet little Zion, the man, the baby we've been talking about. After the break, don't go anywhere. Candy, don't move. Wesley, I will be right back. Welcome back. We're talking about pressure and how to face it, and especially if you are a parent feeling the pressure of being caregiver. I'm talking with Candy and Wesleyan Zelikoffer, who, is who are persevering through the pressure of raising four children, including a 22-month-old Zion, who was born with a rare genetic condition. But he's making strides, and I'm happy now to welcome little Zion to our show. <laughs> Listen, Zion is hanging on to mama. <laughs> <laughs> Candy, it's so good to see you smile after we talked about such pressure. What advice would you offer to any caregiver who's experiencing the weight of that? Ooh, do not try and take it all on your own. Don't try to do it by yourself. Reach out to your community. If you feel like you don't have a community, I believe, you know, getting on social media, looking at your networks, looking at who you're around and just asking for that help because the helpers are there. They're just waiting for you to yeah. ask. Yeah. <laughs> Wesleyan, uh, first of all, I just love how Zion gave us a side eye when you took that cup. Please don't do that again. <laughs> this is live TV. <laughs> but what would your advice be now, especially because you had this unique roller coaster of the pressure of, of believing that you'd done something wrong that you did not. How, what was your advice to, to other dads, especially? Um, just take the pressure off yourself. Um, I think everything is in God's perfect will uh, for your life and things is gonna work out for your good. Yeah. Candy, I know that this created another level of financial stress whenever we talk about health. I mean, they, they talk about bankruptcy in the country, for example, many times it's linked to a health crisis in the family. You recently decided to go back to school to get your master's in organizational leadership. Um, how did going back to school, first of all, I know it's empowering to do that, 
But how did that relieve some of the pressure? Did it feel like I'm, I'm doing something? I'm, I'm not sitting here and giving in to this pressure. Oh, yeah. You know, my first thought, because I went back to school because a retail company shared that they were going to pay for school. They paid $10,000 each year towards your program. And so when I started, it was right before Zion got sick. And I thought, oh, my goodness, they're going to fire me. I, I can't work. I don't have... I just can't be here. I need to support my son and be at the hospital with him every day. Um, but to know that I still had that support from them, they just continued to support me. And when it was time for me to come back, it was no problem. And it felt amazing that it feels amazing that I can continue to go on that path of finishing school and be able to support and inspire my family. Oh, God. <laughs> I love it. Wesleyan, we all want to know what is in that cup? <laughs> What's in the Water. cup? Water. Water? <laughs> Do you know how good of a baby that you have that he would be entertained by a cup of water? That is amazing. Somebody is not feeling pressure today. And it's Zion. Oh, my God. He is so adorable. Continued success continued blessings, and continue sharing your story on social media because it's helped you, but you have helped so many other people. Thank you, family, for joining us today. Give our love to the baby. Oh. <laughs>